Great. All right, folks, we got head coach Mario Cristobal here. As a reminder, he does have a time-sensitive meeting to get to, so we'll only have time for a few questions today. We'll jump right into questions, and we'll start it off with Chris Stock from inside the U. Chris, go ahead. Coach, what has Mitchell Agude brought to your team, and also how would you evaluate your team's pass rush that first game? Mitchell is an excellent football player. He's accountable, hard worker, tough, really good for culture. Um, you know, the scheme really fits him, and I think that's the reason he came to Miami. And uh, he played a, a solid first game, and he's had a really good week of practice. He brings physicality. He brings pass rush. Uh, he sets edges really, really well, plays with a high motor, and certainly increases uh, just the level of play in that front. Our pass rush, we're undisciplined. I think um, we talked about today after practice, you know, we, we need to have better practice habits. We need to run to the ball better. We need to be more physical. It's a very different blueprint. They're, they're not used to it, okay? And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But we have to keep forging forward and use a blueprint that is to the test of time. And that involves the guys up front continuing to lead the charge. And Mitchell has certainly done his part to make that a reality. Go to Adam Lichtenstein from the Sun Sentinel. Adam? Hey, Mario. So it might be a bit of a cliche, but, you know, a lot of people say that, you know, the most improvement comes between week one, week two. On the defensive side of things, uh, which units have you seen improve the most or have you seen all of them improve? Throughout the last couple of days of practice, you mean? Yeah. Well, I can tell you the areas of focus, the ones that we mentioned uh, on Saturday and the uh, days following that, you know, how we really want, we need to be a better tackling team. We had made so much progress, we felt, in the summer and in the, I'm sorry, in the springtime and fall camp and in our scrimmages. And then it, uh, it showed up in spurts on Saturday. And when I mean tackling, I'm talking about not only getting guys on the ground, but knock back tackling as opposed to absorbing. That comes with practicing in a tough manner. And when I say tough, in a smart manner. You know, not going to the ground and making sure you accelerate through contact and run your feet. So that's got to show up. Communication's got to show up. Technique in the secondary has got to show up. Finishing drives. Um, we finished drives on offense, but we left some, some big explosive plays on the table by not finishing downfield uh, up front and on the perimeter. And it starts and ends with the way you practice and conditioning. And uh, as you can tell, I, I want and need more out of the way we practice and we're making progress, but it's not enough. So we're going to, we're going to demand more of ourselves and we're going to teach, you know, we're going to keep coaching and teaching and learning all of us together as a program to keep elevating, you know, the things uh, that we talked about, because you have to practice it. I could, we could sit here and preach it to our blue in the face and show 18, um, you know, different clips about what it should look like, but until you do it again and again and again, so you can't get it wrong, it doesn't show up. So, Hopefully we've hit that number uh, and hopefully it'll show up on Saturday better. We'll go now to Susan Miller Degnan from the Miami Herald. Susan, we can't hear you. We'll come back to you. We'll go to Manny Navarro from the athletic Manny. Hey Mario, wanted to ask you about the facility across the street from the football stadium where you guys had some recruits. Obviously I, I know that didn't exist last year. Curious how it compares to what you have at Oregon and maybe the impact of having a place like that pregame and postgame for recruits to hang out. Um, that place is really nice now and unique and comfortable and it's spacious and it's a great setting to be able to just mingle with, uh, with families, recruits, have our families there as well. It's an awesome pavilion now. You know, I had no idea. I'd never seen it before. So um, it was different where we were at before. Before uh, I was at, at Oregon, we had – Everything was in a, like a, the HDC, the complex was apart from the stadium. So there was no real place for the recruits to go to in the stadium. They had to go across the building where you couldn't see the game from. But it was a, you know, a six floor, uh, beautiful room. I mean, you could see just about everything up there. So but just very it's this is very Miami ish. And this is very like elite level. This is it's an awesome scenario. Really just overall the stadium, the venue itself. Unbelievable. Top to bottom. So looking forward to getting back in there. Looking forward to playing better. Go to David Lake from inside the U, David. Coach, I wanted to ask you your thoughts on John Campbell from game one, and I'm curious if he's shown you enough to this point to be considered one of your five best for whenever Zion is fully integrated back into the lineup. Oh, if you could play six linemen all the time, you would. You know, that's how good he's been. He is, uh, he's proven himself as one of our better players, not to mention just offensive linemen. So um, super proud of his intentional training everything he does is very purpose-driven he just doesn't go out there and get reps to get reps 
he's very conscientious of uh, everything, technique, fundamentals, um, the way he eats, body weight, everything. And so uh, he's, he's been a tremendous, tremendous uh, player, teammate, asset, uh, Miami Hurricane. He's been awesome. As I mentioned, coach does need to get going. So we've got time for one more question. Susan, we'll try you again. Still can't hear you, Susan. So we'll end with Luke Cheney from All Hurricanes. Luke, go ahead. Last question for Coach. Hey, Coach. So how would you describe Malik Shorts as a player, and what type of challenges do you expect him to bring to your offense on Saturday? One more time, I'm sorry. Yeah, so Malik Shorts, how would you describe him as a player, and then what type of challenges do you expect a defender like him to bring to your offense on Saturday? Well, I mean, he's one of several good players. I mean, you're, when, when you play a team – like Southern Miss, that's as disruptive as they are, and that is as line of scrimmage controlling as they are on both sides of the ball. Um, yeah, you, of course, you're very aware of great players, but at the same time, you're also making sure that your teams are playing disciplined football and that they're taking care of business as it relates to us. We've made it a point from the beginning since the day we got here, we're gonna focus on Miami and get good at what Miami does and then apply to the teams that we play against. So, you know, but I always uh, very complimentary of guys that, that really stand out on tape. And they have, they have several good players on tape that merit um, accolades and certainly praise. All right, coach. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.